Are you looking for a travel trailer with no dinette so you can maximize your floor space? Well, stick around, folks. We found some awesome camper trailers. You're going to want to check these out. Hey everybody, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at travel trailers with no dinette so you can maximize your floor space and get the most use out of your camper trailer. Hey guys, if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. And if this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. We certainly invite you to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when Susan and I put out a brand new video. But without any further ado, let's get on with our review of travel trailers with no dinettes. This travel trailer is the Forest River Rockwood Geo Pro model number G20FBS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,442 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 958 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,400 pounds. The hitch weight is 400 pounds. It measures in at just 21 feet, 2 inches long, and it can sleep up to 3 people. When you first walk into this camper, you've got your bedroom off to the right-hand side. That wraps around into your kitchen and living area, and then behind me here is where the bathroom is located. So when you first walk into this camper, my first impression is, you know, it's pretty darn roomy for a small camper. I just like the way it feels so nice and open and bright in here. Uh, you'll notice up front here is where the bed is located. Now let's see what size bed we have here. This is about eh, 72 inches long by about 56 inches wide. So that would be considered a short full bed. Now in here, you'll notice that you have cabinets on either side of the bed. You can hang your garments up in here. And then you've got some open storage up above with this cargo netting. Finally, down below, you have nightstands on either side of the bed with USB ports and electrical receptacles. And finally, the bed does flip up a little bit for some storage underneath. And there's even a couple of drawers located below that. So just past the bedroom area in this little slide out is where your couch is located. Now, You'll notice there's no dinette in here and in more and more travel trailers, we're seeing them set up with no dinette and for good reason. You don't really have to have a dinette permanently in place when you can have a multifunctional couch like this instead. So this couch serves as a comfy couch. You could lay on here and relax. You could sit here and watch the TV right across. It's really a nice setup. This flops down and you have a couple of cup holders in here. So it's a really great setup for you. Now, the other thing that this couch does is it serves as your dinette area. There's a freestanding table that's right behind the couch. You pull that out, set up your table, and two or three people could sit here very, very comfortably and have a meal. The TV straight across. You could watch a little TV and relax. So it's a great setup. And then the final use of this area is that the sofa actually jackknifes out into another bed. And if you did that, you would end up with a bed in here that's about six feet by about 40 inches or so. And so an average size adult or a child would be able to sleep here very, very comfortably. Now up above that, we have some storage area overhead. And then of course, there's a nice window back here to let in some additional lighting. So right across from the sofa, dinette, and bed is where the kitchen is located. Now this is what we would consider an inline kitchen. All of your appliances are in one line. And this is the TV that I was making reference to while I was sitting on the couch. It's actually in a great location in this camper because you can see it from the couch or you can pull it out and swivel it so you can see it from bed. So it's in a perfect spot in here. You'll also notice up top, you have a really nice size cabinet for some storage up there. And then you have a microwave oven over here above the refrigerator. Now the refrigerator itself is a pretty good size fridge. You have a separate freezer and a good fridge space down below. This is actually a 12 volt refrigerator, which means that it runs on both shore power or battery power. Just past that, we have a three burner propane range in here. We also have a real oven down below. And in a travel trailer this size, that's a real treat. You normally don't see both a microwave and an oven in a smaller travel trailer. So great job on this setup. Down below that, there's another hatch that opens for all your pots and pans storage. Next to that, you got a little bottle opener here. 
a little uh, drawer for your soap and sponge and another drawer for all your kitchen utensils. Now I almost forgot the kitchen sink because the drain covers on it, but it's a great size square kitchen sink with a really good size gooseneck faucet overhead. Now here I am in the bathroom and I'm standing in the shower and as you can see, my head is all the way up into this skylight. So I'm 5'11 and there's maybe an inch or two over my head. So if you're taller than 6'1", you're probably gonna have to crouch down if you're in here taking a shower. But a couple nice features about this shower are that in the corner here, it's got three spots for all your soap and shampoo. And instead of having a curtain, it kind of has a curtain, but it's on this track. So it keeps the curtain from blowing in on you. And then it also sort of curves out and away from the shower. So it keeps the curtain out and it just gives you a little bit more elbow room in the shower. Now I'm wondering how much water spray would happen Over since this? you are literally a head above. You know, that's a really good point. I think you might get a good bit. Yeah. Very so, interesting. Good yeah. point. Now, outside the shower, this bathroom has a really nice big, I wouldn't say this is a medicine cabinet. This is more of a storage cabinet, and it's got mirrored doors on it. You could use it as a medicine cabinet. You have a towel ring over here on the side. Down below, a really good size vanity top and sink, which is fantastic. A little flip out drawer. You can keep some cleaning sponges in there. And then there's no storage underneath this door, but that's because you access it from outside the camper. So in an effort to get as much storage space as possible in this bathroom, they actually took the medicine cabinet and put it on the back wall over top of the commode. So when you open that up, you can see it's a standard size medicine cabinet. Once you're sitting on the commode in here though, the bathroom's nice and big. It's the full width of the camper. So it's gonna pass the elbow test all day long. At the front of the camper and under the owner's bed, you've got a nice big pass-through storage area. This travel trailer is the Coachman Northern Spirit model number 1943RB. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 4,926 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,574 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 6,500 pounds. The hitch weight rating on it is 520 pounds and it measures in at 24 feet even and it sleeps up to four people. When you first walk into this RV on the left hand side, you'll find the refrigerator and the bathroom is located in the back of this trailer. Then we wrap around into the kitchen and living area and towards the front of the camper is where the bed is located. Now, when you first walk into this camper, it feels a little weird because it feels just a little teeny bit cramped at the doorway because the refrigerator's here and this cabinet is here. But once you get past those, man, wow, it's, it's got a nice wow factor in here for sure. The uh, recliners, which is also your dinette area, are in a nice big slide out. It's about three feet deep. So that opens up and creates a lot of floor space in here. I'll start here in right by the entry door. And the first thing you have here on your left-hand side are these two large pantry cabinets up top here. Now the shelves are fixed in place. You can't move them around, but still you have plenty of them to be able to store lots of items in here. And then down below, there's an open storage area. They've got a trash can in here that you could certainly keep right here, or you could also use it as a shoe storage area. Now just past that is where the refrigerator is located, and it is a huge refrigerator. Now the swing of these doors, um, I kind of like the way they're oriented right now because if you're outside of your camper, you want to pop in, grab a cold drink, you know, you don't have to go all the way through the camper. You just reach in here, grab what you need, close everything up. I will also point out this is a 12 volt refrigerator and that means that it'll run off of your battery or off of shore power. These 12 volt fridges are awesome. They get cold much faster and they're much safer to use than their, you know, their propane older cousin variety, if you will. Uh, you don't have to worry about turning on and off the propane while you're traveling up and down the road. These will stay cold while you're traveling because your battery can power them for you. So on the right hand side is where the kitchen is located. It's a really great looking kitchen. Up top here, you'll notice that there's a microwave oven and it's a great size for this size camper. Then you'll notice that these two storage cabinets have the black glass inlays, which really is a nice feature to have. And then you've got a really wide open storage cabinet here. Now, a lot of times you won't see a shelf in this cabinet in a lot of travel trailers, but you can buy an interior shelf kit 
at like Walmart or Amazon. We use one inside of our pantry cabinet and it just creates a shelf in the middle and then you can stack more things above and below it. Now, just below that, you've got your whole countertop area here and of course your sink. Now, this countertop has a lot of space on it. There's a receptacle right here on the side of the cabinet so you can plug in a toaster, coffee maker, what have you. And then it's got a really nice uh, double bowl sink in here and of course you've got your sink covers now one thing that they did in this camper that i think is totally cool i've never seen this before is that you can put your little sink covers right up there they're in place out of the way i wouldn't travel down the road with these up here but when you're using your kitchen or let's say you just want to use half you can pop one in place you can still use your other sink and you have all this counter space that you can use I'm gonna build one of these inside of our camper too because we just love the idea of being able to store those away somewhere so they're not in the way. Currently, we put them down in a cabinet underneath. It's a little inconvenient to reach them. So this is a really great idea. Uh, as we wrap on around here, we've got a three burner propane stove. And then down below that, we have a real oven with the knobs that light up and everything. And then of course you have storage underneath of both the sink and the countertop area. And then you've got three full extension drawers here for all of your kitchen utensils. Now this kitchen has a really neat feature in it. And since this um, trailer has no dinette, what they've done is they've extended the countertop space, put a couple of bar stools in here. And so you can use this area to sit down and enjoy a meal anytime that you like. I really love the setup in here. It's very smart very well thought out. Now just behind here is where your entertainment center is located. They have a very nice sized TV in here. This can actually pull out and swivel so you can see it from bed or you can just leave it straight on and you can lay back in your recliner and watch TV that way as well. Below that you've got open storage here. They even have a fast charge here so you can set your phone right on it for you. You've got your radio off to the side and then open storage down below that. And then you've got some doors here with even more storage behind there. Now, here I am in the living area, I guess you would call it. It's also your dinette area, believe it or not. We're right across from the kitchen and they have it set up with theater seating in here. So it's nice and comfy. These seats do recline. They don't go back very far, but you can still sit here and relax and watch TV and enjoy yourself. A couple of cup holders built into the center here and this lifts up so you have a place to store all of your remote controls. I don't know about you, we probably have 10 remote controls in our RV. It's amazing. So you need a place to store them all. Now, what I always look for in an area like this is, is there a receptacle nearby? So if I want to charge my phone or my computer, or my Kindle or whatever, uh, I can do that. And there are a couple of receptacles off to my right so that I'm able to do that. So this is a great setup. Now on each side, there's an end table. One side has closed storage behind the cabinet door. And then this side over here has open storage. Both are convenient and make a lot of sense. It gives you an option and choice as to how and where you'd like to store things. Now, right behind, the recliner is where your table stows away. And this table will come out and set up right in front of these recliners. And this is also used as your dinette. So I love that it's a multifunctional area. It's not always a dinette. And you can pull out your table and set it up when you want or pull it out of the way and enjoy the floor space. Or you can also use this table outside if you wish because it is a freestanding table. So here we are at the very front of the travel trailer, and this is where the owner's bed is located. Let's see how big this is. It sure looks like it's 80 inches to me. Sure enough, it is 80 inches by 60 inches. And so this is a residential style queen size bed in here. So that's fantastic, especially for you taller folks that are looking for a longer bed. And then you'll notice you've got your cabinetry all around the bed. There's plenty of storage located up top so you can put all your clothing away. There's also an open shelf under here, lights underneath that turn on and off right at the light itself, which is a nice feature. And then on either side, there's a mirrored wardrobe cabinet with a bar up top so you can hang all your garments in here and use that for storage as well. Also, I'll note that on each side of the bed, there is an end table and there's also a receptacle and USB ports on both sides of the bed. 
So underneath of this bed, there is an awesome storage setup under here. And it's got a combination of open storage on one side and then drawers that pull out on the other side. It's even got a place for a laundry basket under here, shoe storage, hat storage, however you'd like to use it. But it's a very smart way to take advantage and create as much accessibility to this space as possible. So here I am in the bathroom and I'm standing in the shower like I always am. And as you guys know, I am 5'11". Uh, and there is a lot of headroom over my head in here, but I'll still give you a measurement. Now they did install a skylight in here as well. They probably didn't really need to, but it's nice because it does allow some extra lighting into the bathroom. And into the skylight area, you have a full eight feet, eight inches of headroom. And in the entire camper, in the center of the camper anyway wow you've got seven feet of headroom so for you taller folks you know this might be a really good choice for a travel trailer for you because of all the headroom that you have now this is a corner style um, shower and i really like it because it's got these glass doors that wrap around and when you're in here taking a shower you know there's I, the corner style showers just make me feel like there's plenty of elbow room plenty of space to move around in here you'll also notice there's a shampoo and a soap shelf back here there's even a little spot here where you could put your foot up and for you ladies that want to shave your legs that probably makes life a little easier for you also the shower sprayer pulls off the wall so you can use that as you like as well now just outside of the shower this is where your medicine cabinet is located up top. It's got some closed storage up top, open storage down below. Your vanity top has a very good size sink in here. It's also got a receptacle off to the right hand side. And then down below, there's additional storage. Now, just outside the shower on the right hand side, you've got this storage cabinet here, which has a couple of shelves built in. So plenty of room for your linens or toilet supplies. There's a couple of hooks on the wall for your towels. So they're within easy reach when you get out of the shower. And finally, when you sit on this commode, it's not going to pass the elbow test. But I will say this with this door shut, it's a big enough bathroom that you don't feel very cramped in here at all. This travel trailer is the Forest River Flagstaff Microlite, model number 25 FKBS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 6,049 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,723 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 7,772 pounds. The hitch weight is 772 pounds, the length is 25 feet 11 inches long, and it sleeps up to two people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you can't help but notice the front kitchen in here with the big front window. As we wrap on around, we go into the theater seating and sort of dinette area. And then you have your entertainment center here. In the center of this RV is where the bathroom is located. And all the way towards the back is where the bedroom is located. Now, my first impression when walking in here is that this feels like a much larger camper than it really is. I think it only it's only like 25 feet 11 inches long, but you just feel like you get so much more space in here. Now, one of the reasons for that is because of this front kitchen setup. And I really think this is a fantastic way to set up an RV for a couple of reasons. Number one, you get all this countertop space in here because you really have sort of a U-shaped kitchen in here, but in this area it's a L-shape and it gives you a ton of extra countertop space. And then of course you also have this nice big window because normally you can't look out the front of your camper, but now you can look out front, check out the views there, get extra light in. I think it's just a really, really cool setup. Now starting from this side of the kitchen, up top here we have a microwave oven and everything's still packaged up in there, you know, the round glass dish and all that. Next to that, there's an open cubby storage area here. Then down below your microwave, you have your range top. You've got a nice three burner stove, which is fantastic. And then down below that, we have a real oven. Now, we get a couple of questions about ovens all the time, uh, both on the YouTube comments and also in our private Facebook group. And then some folks even email us. And they wanna know a couple things. First of all, why are there five knobs on an oven that has a three burner stove shouldn't it just be three knobs and one extra burner for the oven well that's true but one of these knobs is also a sparker so uh, if we had any electricity in here i could show you that but what it is is you turn on your knob for your gas 
wherever burner you wanted to come out and then you turn on the sparker and that ignites the fire. And the same thing is true down in the oven area. And then the second question we get about RV ovens all the time is, why is there only one shelf in here, not two like your residential oven at home? And the reason for that is because the burners that heat the oven are right here. I mean, they're in the oven, they're pretty high up. And if there were two shelves in here, you know, the bottom shelf, if you set it too low, whatever you put there is going to get burnt every time. So really there's practically, practically speaking, only enough room for one shelf in here. And then just below your oven here, you have another drawer for some small pots and pan storage. So as we wrap on around the kitchen, you'll notice up top here that you've got these three doors that open. It's all open storage behind the doors, so you can take plenty of advantage of that area. You also have a light out here, which will light up, plus two more underneath. So your countertop area is going to be very well lit. Now back in this corner here, there are a couple of receptacles. And so, I mean, you could have a coffee maker, toaster, all that set up right here, and it's perfect. It's nice and out of the way. There's even a little window off to the side for even more lighting. And then it's got this just massive single bowl sink in here, which is fantastic. I mean, it's great for washing dishes and all your bigger pots and pans. And then it's even got these dish drains that sit right on top. Um, and then as we wrap around past here, we have another receptacle over here in the corner with some USB ports so you can plug things in there if you like. Now down below all of this, we have additional storage and plenty of it underneath of the kitchen sink area. And then there are four drawers for all of your kitchen utensils. Now, just past the kitchen sink and countertop area, there's a very large pantry closet here too. And this is really deep. It is, gosh, 28 and a half inches deep on the inside and probably about 13 and a half inches wide on the inside too. So you have plenty of storage here, both up and down. So you can plant, you know, store all kinds of dry foods. And then finally, we have our refrigerator and freezer. They put the outside shower stuff in here. They're not done unpacking this RV yet. It's brand new, sitting on a dealer lot. But you can see you've got a very good size freezer and a good size refrigerator in here as well. This is a 12 volt model. So this does run off of your battery. Uh, and when you're plugged into shore power, that will charge your battery because your fridge is running off of the battery. Now, one last feature that could be related to the kitchen or could just stand alone is the closet just inside the entry door. Now, there are removable shelves that are in here, so you can use the hooks on the back and just use this as a coat closet, or you can keep the shelving in here and use it for additional storage for just general purposes or as part of the kitchen. So as we wrap around past the kitchen area, now we get into the living area of this camper. And I like the way that it's set up. Now this particular model has this recliner seating in place. Um, so both of these seats recline, they are electric and we don't have power in here right now, so I can't, I can't do it, but they're very, very comfortable to sit on. And then they have these really cool side tables. Now these are some really nice side tables probably one of the best setups I've seen yet because they're very, very sturdy. You know, they move around very, very easily. They stow away like this one over here very easily and they're at the right height. And you can also adjust the height on these too uh, to make it just right for yourself. And this is in the perfect position because as you'll see in a minute, the TV is directly across from us. So you can sit here, relax, have a meal, watch TV, whatever you'd like to do. Now, this is also a super comfortable uh, comfy recliner as I mentioned and in the middle here this piece pops on down and then you have a couple of you know drink holders here and there's even a spot here for a receptacle and a couple of USB ports. Now one reason I think that this area helps to create a nice big floor plan in here is because this is a slide out that I'm sitting in and this is a deep slide out. I mean on the inside gosh it's about 41 inches so a uh, pretty deep slide out. So it really gives you a lot more floor space in here and makes this really a comfortable spot to sit. And then finally, I like that they have a window behind you here to let in additional light. You can open the window and get a cross breeze in and you even have a side window here as well. There's also a light up top, which will shine down. So, you know, if you're eating dinner and you want some light or reading a book, you have all that with you as well. 
Now, directly across from the recliners is where the entertainment center is located. And like I just mentioned, the TV is located straight across from the recliners. Perfect spot. Uh, I would even put a bigger TV in here if I could, but this is a great spot for it. And then down below that, of course, you know, you've got your receptacles and you've got your cable TVs and all that. But down below, you have some open storage. And then finally, you have a fireplace down below to give it a really nice ambiance inside your camper. So here I am in the bathroom, which is located in the middle of this trailer. Um, I like the location of it because it does have two doors and one of them is a door that will close it off from the entertainment and kitchen area and the other door there is a bedroom door that will slide and close and cut off the bathroom as well. So uh, I think it's in a good location and it certainly seems to work very well. It seems nice and big and spacious in here. Now they even have a corner style shower in here which I like. Uh, I, I get a little pushback on it from people that also have them that they don't like them as much. They feel like there's not enough uh, elbow room in them. So let us know in the comments down below what you think if you have this style of shower in your RV. Do you have enough room in there or not? But just standing in the shower, um, from the shower floor up into the skylight, let's see how much room we have here. Now we have like six feet, six inches of space. So plenty of headroom there. And it generally in the majority of the trailer, just regular headspace, you have about six feet, eight inches of headspace. So for you taller folks, I think you'll be able to fit in here very, very comfortably. Now this corner shower behind me here has a couple of shelves where you can put your soap bottles and shampoo and things like that. It also comes with this little mesh pouch so you can uh, tuck some things in here for storage. And then finally, you can just close your glass doors, take a nice shower in here and not worry about getting water everywhere or having a shower curtain blow in on you or things like that. Now, just outside of the shower, they have a nice big wide medicine cabinet here. So there's plenty of storage space there. Down below that, you've got your vanity, which is a good size vanity sink for a trailer bathroom, lots of countertop space. And I don't see a receptacle here anywhere. Oh, right here up front. Thanks, Susan. Didn't see that one. And then finally, down below, you have some additional storage as well. Now, Susan is standing in the shower and I'm standing across from her, sort of at the entry into the bedroom. But this is where the commode is located. Just above that, we have a nice big linen closet here. And there's plenty of room in there for all your towels and linens and all that good stuff. And then, of course, sitting on the toilet, it feels really big and roomy in here. There's really nothing in front of me that's in my way. Even with both doors shut, it still feels roomy. As far as the elbow test goes, and eh, we're not going to pass that, but I don't think we really need to in here. This is a big enough bathroom that it feels very, very comfortable. Now, finally, here we are in the very back of this travel trailer in the owner's bedroom. Nice thing is it does have its own door, so it can be separate from the rest of the trailer. And it's a very nice setup. Over top of the bed, you'll notice that we have these three cabinet doors with black glass inlay uh, all open behind them, so you've got lots of storage. Then over top, you have a couple of reading lights. Each reading light also has a USB port built into it, so you can plug a phone in or something and put it right on top of these window valances and charge your phone overnight that way. There's also a little shelf on each side of the bed. And you'd have to have your cord kind of run from up top to down there to put your phone there and charge it in. I'd probably just throw my phone right up top here. I also keep my remotes up here so we don't lose them. But anyway, uh, the bed itself, let's see how big this is. And I really like this headboard feature too. What do you think about that, hon? Yeah, good looking. Yeah, it looks nice. Um, so let's see what the distance is here. We've got about 80 inches and the width on it is 60 inches. So we have a residential sized queen bed in here. Now, another nice feature here is we also have windows on each side of the bed so you can get some cross breeze in here. There's another light up here to help light up the bed even more. And then under your bed, this does lift up. You've got a couple of drawers that you could pull out without lifting the bed but then you also have additional storage behind the drawer space. The TV location is a great spot right next to the wardrobe and just above you can see the rough-ins for the electric and cable TV. So also in this bedroom, it has a very nice sized wardrobe closet in here. Uh, so this is about two feet deep. You can hang all your garments in here, still place things on the floor in here for additional storage, but it's all mirrored. 
and it, it's really just a great feature to have. And then down below that, we have a couple of large drawers for storage and another cabinet door as well. And then next to your wardrobe cabinet, this bedroom even has its own entrance in and out of the camper. Now, a lot of folks really like to have two ways in and out of their camper without having to use the emergency exit window because they're afraid they can't get out the window or once they get out, it's a really far drop down to the ground. So this is a great feature to have both for safety and just for convenience. Uh, if someone, if you got like kids out in the other room that are sleeping, you can sit out by the fire and be able to come into your bedroom without having to walk through the camper and wake everyone up. Uh, but a very nice setup in here. Now, one thing I noticed in here that's a little bit of a concern for me is if you look up on the ceiling, there are only two ceiling vents in this room for your air conditioning. And there's only one air conditioner in the whole camper. And so... Uh, let's walk out and we'll talk about that a little bit. So this style of air conditioning system is what's called a ducted air conditioning system. So air will pour out of, of the air conditioner itself. You can open these two little dampers up and it'll pour right out into the room. Or you can close these and now that forces the air into the ducted system which runs through the roof of this RV. And you'll notice there are four vents out here in the kitchen and living area then there's another vent or two in the bathroom and then there's just two more vents in the bedroom and i would be afraid that it would get hot in the bedroom because it's just not enough air to go around part of the reason for that is because rv air conditioners are very very inefficient and so when you close these little dampers to keep the air from just dumping into the room what happens is the amount of airflow that comes out of the vents isn't as good as you would expect it to be. And also these air conditioners are very loud and this is right where your TV is. And so in our RV, we just did a nice upgrade where we added uh, a way to both increase the efficiency of our air conditioner and also how to make our air conditioner quieter. And this kind of a trailer is perfect for both of those remedies because you need it to be quieter so you can watch your AC and you need as much air efficiency as possible to get as much air through your ducted system as possible or your bedroom's gonna be very, very hot. I've got a couple links and I'll stick them in the notes down below if you wanna see what we did to make some corrections in an RV and it made life a whole lot better. Hey, let us know in the comments down below what you think of all three of these campers, which one is your favorite and why, and what you think about travel trailers in general that don't have a dinette. Now, if you'd like to check out some more travel trailers with no dinettes, just click on the box down below, and Susan and I will see you in the next video.